On this episode, thinking big, executing big, and being scared. Hey everybody, this is The Quarter Show. And we're talking about a couple different things here, and so uh, we'll try and keep it relatively brief, but we may run a little long. You know, we're talking about thinking big and executing big, uh, but I want to start with the, the, the first part, is, is being scared. Look, here's the truth of it, is, and these relate, by the way, the thinking big and the scared and one overcomes the other, but sales is scary. Sales is scary, and I think not all, not enough people actually talk about it or confront it or, or sort of bring that to light, but it is, you know, sales, being an entrepreneur, all these things, you know, inter, interconnected, it, it's scary and it paralyzes people. And I think that, I think that, you know, I don't know, business and different things like that, people made it not okay to be scared um, or to say that, you know, and, and the truth is it is, and, and, and you have to understand that. And, and the more, the, you know, the more you understand that and the more you, you know, come to grips with that, the, the more you can sort of control it. And just, you know, knowing is half the battle, as, as, as G.I. Joe uh, taught us, you know. And, and, and so it's one of those things where it's like, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to know that it's scary. It's okay to have that phenomenon. And often when you're closing a deal, you feel that, that, that awkwardness or that pressure. And when you're doing the right moves and you're pushing up against it, um, and, you're, and you're asking them for the close and you're, and you're, you're sort of pushing up against that resistance, it can be awkward, it can be scary, and, and you experience that pressure, but that's a good thing. That means that you're moving in the right direction and you're getting closed. And, um, and so I just think, you know, the, the, the scary nature of it can be, can be really debilitating. It can, be, it can paralyze you, and you can't let it paralyze you. And, and, and so the way to overcome it, the way to sort of offset it, is, is by thinking big, and not just thinking big, but executing big. And a lot of people drop that point out. They, they look at it from the standpoint of um, they think big, right? And they may write something down and things sound good. And they have big goals or big aspirations, but it's not enough. It's not enough. You have to execute big, right? You have to think big and execute big. And I was just talking to my team this morning on, on the sales muster. And, you know, you look at it, it's like that's, that's why we have NASA, right? That's why we have Disney World. That's why we have SpaceX and Tesla and Apple and the iPhone is because people thought big and they executed big. And when you are so consumed with thinking big and executing big, it tends to pale and offset the fear. And fear really sinks in or being scared really sinks in when you're when that action or the motion that you're taking or the things that you're doing are not strongly bolstered by thinking big and executing big because you want to be so busy thinking big and executing big that you sort of forget about the fear. So you're so in the motion of, of it that this kind of goes away. And what happens is, is if you don't, if you don't, it paralyzes you more. And next thing you know, you kind of look around and you realize that you've, you've drilled down your day to sort of what amounts to text messaging and, and emailing and maybe doing some social media work or something. And, and, and you start, you're like, geez, and, and you're at everything about your day and your execution just dropped down to this sort of like lowest common denominator where you're kind of like doing some things and you're not getting any sales. But, you know, push yourself to, to really think big, really write down, like, what are you trying to do? And, and what do you want to happen? And then really, really push the, the highest point of what that could be, how big could it go? And then what would you have to do? What, what sort of activities do you need to execute big? Execute big behind it. And when you get so consumed with that, when you get so consumed with that, you, the, it, it helps suffocate the, the fear involved in doing all that stuff. And next thing you know, sales just happen. And the fear turns into fun. You know, it, it becomes fun and you're enjoying it. And you're just so immersed in the action. This weekend, I, I, you know, I, was, I went to a bookstore and I grabbed that, that one book who I, um, Sophia Amora or something, I, I, I forget her name, but she's, she's the girl who uh, came up with Nasty Gal uh, stores and stuff like that, which is totally blowing up. A lot of venture capital, I think, behind that these days. She's got a movie coming out, I believe. She wrote a book called Girl Boss. 
Uh, great, 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 interesting story there. And anyway, it was, it was a, I grabbed the book just to, to, I haven't read it yet, but I grabbed the book just to, just to read because I, I was inspired by her story. And um, you know, one thing she said, she was just addicted, just addicted to the game, addicted to building the company. And, and she, at the time when she was doing the, her vintage gear and stuff, just filled her apartment to the ceiling. I mean, she didn't go to social events. The only thing she did was like go to Starbucks and go out shopping and find the vintage stuff and do all the different things and just sell, sell, sell. And 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 was addicted to the business. And and it's interesting because you know when you're so consumed with the big think and the big execution, almost all the fear and all the other things go away because you're just completely you're 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 consumed with the big think and the big execution. And, and, you, know. you know, from from the from the perspective of the trenches, and, and Rob, I know you've never been in the trenches, so I know I know you have no. Don't know what that's this, like. But yeah. it may have been <laughs> so long ago that you were in the trenches. And that. <laughs> but uh, my experience of it was like this: it's very, it's right in line with that. Okay, so so I, when I started out in sales at Richter, yeah. I'd never been in sales before, and so I was scared all the time, <laughs> like just like always, always nervous, always scared. And, you know, you get pepped up and you go, and then I happen to execute big a couple few times. I happened to do enough work that the execution, and suddenly I'd, I'd made some sales or had some clients come aboard that were like sizable and good. And then what happened is then, and this is just, you know, this is sort of bass backwards way to do it, and, and the right way to do it is, is the way he laid it out. Then I started to think big. Yeah. And then the fear went away <clears throat> because I'd, I'd established myself a little bit. And this took place very quickly. This isn't a long thing. But then what, you'll, what, what any salesperson who's been around experiences is this. If you stop, then you, you, your, your execution goes down real quick. And then you, you, you might still be thinking big, but you're not executing on it. And then the fear starts to creep back into your sales. And you know you can recover. After a while, I know, I know that like, like a couple weeks ago, I had to take a few days off for a very specific thing that was important. I don't take any days off. Yeah. Very specific thing. And of course, my numbers were in the tank just as a matter of course, right? So, so, but I know I can recover from anything at this point. So I'm not as afraid, but, but on a day-to-day -day basis though, I'm like, geez, I gotta recover quick. I gotta get, I gotta get back quick, right? So I get my, I, I, I wrote down all my, all my targets and goals and everything I was gonna do today. And then I started to execute against it and things are starting to pick up and this and that. But, but from the, from the, as a salesperson, it, you do need to you do need to think big. You need to think very specifically. You need to think very mm -hmm. specifically. You need to write things down very specifically, and then execute against it, and execute through the emotion. And then, as soon as you start to start to succeed, that fear will start to die away, and you have to keep it going. Who, who's the guy that does the no days off? That motivational speaker, that really amazing fellow, Mark something. That that black fellow who's like, he talks so you know like the, that. I can't remember his name hmm. now, but he's talked. He, he was on Grant Cardone's show the other day and stuff like that. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm drawing up. Anyway, look, just, yeah. just, just YouTube. Yeah. No days off, and, you, and like motivational speaker, and like that's my viewpoint. I, I can't fathom taking a day off. And like he was talking about with that, with that lady with her, with her vintage clothing line, you get addicted to it. I'm, I've been addicted to to what we're doing here at Richter for five years now. Like, I love it. I love every day. I'm excited every every day to wake up. Some days have different emotions <laughs> attached to them, but. But yeah, you have to take action at, at such a level. And, and honestly, I have a note right here. It says, form habits and routines around action connected to thinking big and big execution. You start forming habits and routines. Like if you have to, build your calendar, build your framework to form that form the habit and routine around the big thing that you come up with and the execution connected to it. And it'll overcome the fear and the more action, the more more action, the more things you do, that's where deals happen. That's where things happen, anything, whether you're an entrepreneur or in sales, like it happens from doing things. And, and the lower the, 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 the lower the amount of things that you do, right? The, the lower the amount of action you take or, or activity and, and motion, sort of the more fear that creeps in, certainly if you're in sales, because sales is a very high confront sport. And I think it affects everybody. I think a lot of people don't, you don't hear you don't hear sales books, a lot of people don't talk about stuff, but it's not just like the fear of rejection, it's just like fear in general, just being scared. Just being scared, you know, and, and it can really get the best of you, but the important thing is that you're aware of it, number one, and you're also aware that the remedy, if you will, the solution remedy is to think big, have a clear picture of what that big thing is. You know, you, a guy like Walt Disney building Walt Disney World that at the time that, that that's completely 
nuts, right? Somebody who's creating cartoons and then he's going to go build Walt Disney <laughs> World. It, it's mm -hmm. nuts when you really, really think about it. Or Elon Musk building SpaceX. It's, it's nuts for a private person to build a, a, a space program or whatever. And, and you know, I'm sure a lot of people look at it from a distance and say, well, that's fine for Elon and that's fine for Walt Disney. But it's like, what's the difference between them and you? And what's the difference? And your big thing could be whatever it is. It doesn't you don't have to go build a spaceship? Um, but you do have to look at it from a big thing standpoint. And I cannot tell you how many people and how many companies that come across that think incredibly small, 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 small. You know, and I'm amazed at how small the majority of people think. Yeah, it's interesting. Like here at Richter, right? so every so often a salesperson will run into somebody who genuinely says this and thinks it, where they go, "Oh, we have enough clients at the time right now," and da, yeah. da, da, da. and I've heard that a few times. It's very rare, but but it does happen. But you go like this here at Richter. You, you go to you go to Will over in our production, our creative director and Richter co-founder. You go to Will Seabrook and you say this. You say, you know, we want it. We you know, the, the, this whole division of the company and they want X number of videos. Da, 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 and he goes. Yeah, no problem. We'll scale the whole thing. We'll go and find A-class talent right away and start building out this. And <laughs> like, it's, it's just immediate scale. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You know, it's like Im Richter immediately scales to meet any challenge with the highest quality work. Yeah, we're not just trying to get some tiny little thing and get, you know, and we're, we're thinking big for the client, not yeah. just for Richter, but right. we're, we're thinking how can we take them to 100 million or how can we take them to 1 billion or how can, you know, in including ourselves. And, and, you know, you do you have, you have that. That think big has to be built into your culture. You know, and, and think think it's small. It, total poison, total poison. You know, it'll it'll contract and it'll 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 make you small and it'll paralyze. And the smaller you think, the more fear comes in, and then the less you do, and then the more paralyzed people are. It's terrible. Yeah, and ultimately the danger with you know with fear is like you you haven't succeeded yet, so you're afraid. Yeah. You, whatever's going on, you haven't done enough work, you haven't thought big enough, and so you're afraid of like, what if I don't make it? What if this? What if that? And then there's the other danger of you you make you you get yourself some ground, you get yourself to a plateau, and then you stop working as much. You, you yeah. rest on your laurels. Either way, lack of action, lack of just doing, lack of just the the big execution, the big think and the big execution at all times. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not saying you got to do this, but when I was on my honeymoon, I was closing deals. <laughs> I was, I was out of town. You keep the momentum. And I was shut it. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Not that everybody you know, does. Everybody doesn't have to be. Yeah, but you got to, you got to keep, you got to keep the momentum going. Yeah, it's you have momentum. To, you have to look at that momentum and really look at it like, like. Have I clearly articulated yeah. my big think? Have I written down what is my big think? And it changes and it ebbs and flows over time. But have you written it down? And then have I clearly written my plan to execute on it? You know, like, how am I going to take it there? If your sales are at 1 million per year right now, you start looking at you go, well, like, how can I actually do where I'm going to do 6 million? And it doesn't just have to be a target. It could be like you, you painted a picture for what you're going after in your life, which for you is very big think. And then you start connecting all the dots for how you're going to get there. And, 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 that, and when you take that very real and you get into that and you take action against it, very serious action against it, what happens is it starts, the, the fear kind of just, you don't have time for it. You just kind of go. It's just it gets neutralized, and then you're just doing action, and yeah. just things just happen. You know, Ben actually before we did the show had a, had a deal, and just you know, I just was saying to one of the other uh, people here, you know, just observing the deal. It was like it, it was it was just so clear. It was just a matter of like picking up the phone and doing this, and and sort of like asking those right questions and controlling the conversation and doing all the different things. And next thing you know, he hangs up, and it was a, it was a done deal, and it, it was like. Just as a, it's simple, but as a case study, you just start looking at it, it's like it's it's connected to the big think, it's connected to the big execution, and that action leads to leads to those deals happening, it leads to things happening. And sometimes salespeople are like, oh, they're not calling me back, or their numbers aren't there. And you know what? It's almost always connected to them and the actions that they're not taking, the things that they're not doing, um, the things that they're not confronting, and ultimately, it, it just this is what this is what companies quarterly numbers are made up of and what you want to build and what you want to be personally is is somebody who thinks big somebody who executes big has it has a big plan is executing big against it and is so busy doing that 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 it just it just suffocates the the fear involved uh you know in, in, in sales because it, it, it can be scary and if and if you if you start feeling the awkwardness or the, or the, or the scariness or the back off nature i think that when you look at it, you realize that you're you, you've you've forgotten what your big think is, and you've you don't have that plan to execute. 
and you're becoming paralyzed and this is it's, it's sort of giving this oxygen and this thing is getting bigger you know the the, the, the fear and all the stuff connected to it so they are connected um, but it, it becomes fun and enjoyable and exciting to the degree that you really sort of fan the flames to the big think and the big execution and not and not this over here you know so well, hopefully that's a good uh, you know tip for you help with help this week and things like that um, well, more coming at you soon obviously uh, if you haven't already subscribe to the show and we definitely appreciate you watching hit the like button and, and share on social okay thanks